pie. They told us all about pie in night school. It was a very special night school. Tell me, O oh Muse, of that ingenious hero who traveled far and wide after he had sacked the famous town of Troy. Many cities did he visit, and many were the nations with whose manners and customs he was acquainted. Moreover, he suffered much by sea while trying to save his own life and bring his men safely home. But do what he might, he could not save his men, for they perished through their own sheer folly in eating the cattle of the sun god Hyperion. So the god prevented them from ever reaching home. Tell me, too, about all these things, O oh daughter of Job, from whatsoever source you may know. For those who suffered their senior year learning classical literature, tales of tragic heroes, exalted to be humbled and humbled to be exalted, commenced in medias res, these words may sound familiar. Summoning memories of the cunning Odysseus and his many adventures battling the Cyclops, surviving the sounds of the siren song and negotiating the perils of Scylla and Charybdis, trying to find his way back home, but perhaps far more intriguing than the man who actually devised the plan to build a Trojan horse to deceive an enemy, the Achaeans, who he had been fighting for a very long time. To no avail is the tale of the daughter of Icarius, the suffering Penelope, who is actually only mentioned 104 times in this classic tale. And if you only find yourself wondering why all of the other guys seem to have all of the luck, Penelope may be a woman with whom you need to become acquainted because essentially she understood probability and statistics and the law of large numbers, developing a test in archery skills that she knew to a mathematical certainty that only her husband could pass, while others would always miss the mark, having sinned in the original case, a propitious lesson for all in a pandemic crisis, where we are vexed by numerical conundrums spun by a novel coronavirus every day. The sun shines for you, he said, the day we were lying among the rhododendrons on Howth, head in the gray tweed suit, and his straw hat the day I got him to propose to me, yes. Like now, yes, 16 years ago, my God, after that long kiss, I near lost my breath, yes. He said I was a flower of the mountains, yes. So we are flowers of all a woman's body, yes. That was one true thing he said in his life, and the sun shines for you today, yes. The law of large numbers dictates that if you repeat a random exercise a sufficient amount of times, you will inevitably and eventually obtain the desired result. And perhaps if you don't understand this basic concept in probability and statistics, you may well often be uttering audibly to yourself about your wonder and amazement as to why all of the other guys always seem to have all of the luck waking up surprised. So let's get woke, shall we? It is an empirical fact that a respiratory tract infection, whether it occurs through bacteria or viruses, has only a limited engagement area to entertain a human host. And that is through either the nostrils or through the mouth. Landing a sufficient quantum of contagion in that limited space. Accordingly, if a person is infected with a respiratory tract infection and decides to talk, sneeze, or cough from behind you, to a mathematical certainty, there is no ballistic theory or any other computational fluid dynamic beyond a magic bullet theory that will enable that infected person to infect you by talking, sneezing, or coughing behind you. This may be a difficult concept for persons with one ply cotton, preferably impervious to penetration by microbial particles, gummy corded to their faces, but 
was their noses peeking out in a respiratory tract infection, public health emergency. But the law of natural selection is not your friend in a pandemic crisis, and a God in heaven may not like you, and will be less kind in offending your delicate sensibilities, seeking feelings of empowerment and efficacy, and church is closed. It is an empirical fact that amongst all of the biological particles in the world, it is the viruses that are the most abundant, enjoying a distinct advantage in superior numbers over man. And for those familiar with even the most recent evolving science, a virus has the ability to mutate innumerable times to develop increasingly lethal variants and strains. And if that is all that you know about coronaviruses, and their signature crowns. There is a saying that if you are ever invited to a poker game and don't know who the sucker is, it is probably you. For despite being the most abundant particles, biological particles in the world, giving rise to an almost infinite range of possibilities and permutations and combinations equipped with the ability to mutate into multiple dangerous strains, there are only 220 viruses that are harmful to man. Change is inevitable, but growth is optional. And most mutations amongst viruses are so very small that they can only be detected with the most powerful microscope, amounting simply to alterations and sequences of amino acids on a single strand of ribonucleic acid wrapped inside a simple membrane. But a novel coronavirus, according to researchers at the Scripps Research Institute, the same institution that prepared the definitive research paper to establish that a novel coronavirus could only have evolved through nature, zoonotically, has not only since introduction mutated into more lethal strains, but has actually self-corrected an inefficiency noted in their very first paper, adding protein spike crowns upon its teeth to increase its efficiency in attaching to a human respiratory tract cell. And even that researcher was compelled to admit that a virus does not normally acquire such a drastic change of function so quickly in a population as if a novel coronavirus went out and married a chia pet. And if a novel coronavirus is advancing more than you are in a pandemic crisis, a God in heaven simply does not like you and school is closed. The law of large numbers dictates that if you repeat a random exercise a sufficient amount of time, you will inevitably and eventually achieve the desired result, all things being equal. But a professional gambler like a novel coronavirus that somehow has increased the number of crowns upon its surface to become more efficient in its attack, you can increase your chances of winning a game of chance by not simply relying upon dumb luck, but rather by exploiting those advantages in your environment that increase your probability for success. And if you have a problem with fractions and percentages, don't worry, the pandemic may not go on indefinitely for you. There is only one way that epidemiologists and infectious disease control professionals for over a century have found to be the most effective way to identify an emerging pathogen in the population to prevent its spread. And that is through a robust tracer contact follow-up operation. Nobody wants to receive bad news. If you are in a high school and you think that you are pregnant, or you think that you've got someone pregnant, or if you discover a lump and you think it may have be, it may be cancer, getting tested and verifying the fact is probably the very last, the very last thing that you want to do. And if you feel fine and have no evolutionary pressures upon you, Unless you are a nervous Nelly or a hypochondriac, more likely than not, you are going to delay getting tested until the moment of clarity makes it clear to you that you have to do so. For an infectious disease control professional, by definition crisis management, your first thought should be emergency room triage protocol. And the very last thing that you want to do is misallocate your critical resources, testing the folks who know they caught the virus because they always have the worst luck. Now panicked by an announcement that a pathogen is killing people all over the world and is now in their neighborhood trying to kill them. Pandemic is a beautiful thing because if you are so sick that you finally convince yourself that you need to go to a doctor, nobody is going to have to tell you to come 
issue public service announcements, you will show up because you are sick. Very efficient. For one reason or another, even the nation's only physician serving as a state governor decided to make tracer contacts a low priority. But the Chinese, whose Wuhan example he used for his example in shutting down an entire state of 8 million people, after hitting the pandemic panic button, by February had commenced following up on their tracer contacts for over 56,000 laboratory confirmed cases. With teams of five epidemiologists performing thousands of tracer contact follow-ups every day. And with that very large controlled sample of known infected persons seeking the most probable persons to be infected in the largest country in the world, they found less than 5% were being infected by persons infected with the virus that has spread around the world. And even the World Health Organization refused to conclude at that time that a highly contagious pathogen was the source of the disease because just a simple flu infection would have found 20 to 40 percent of persons with whom a sick person came in contact also afflicted with that very same medical condition. But they did, did find that cross infections did tend to be tied to certain locations, as in real estate, where the three most important considerations are location, location, and location. If you don't believe the Chinese numbers, just recently in India, conducting the largest tracer contact study in the world on just two cities, reviewing over three million laboratory confirmed cases and their trace contacts, could only find about 10% of secondary infections. But they too found that infections tended to be tied to location, location, and location. Zig Ziglar, the famous salesman and motivational speaker, often amazed his audiences by repeating basic wisdoms. Not quite like another person who told people to do simple things like not build your house on sinking sand. And one of his most famous vignettes involved a person who might be asked to hit a target while blindfolded, a most difficult task. If you are trying to hit a target like an invisible enemy that you can't see, he said, it is very, very difficult. But he said in confusion that it should be self-evident that as difficult as it is to hit a target that you cannot see, to a mathematical certainty, it is absolutely impossible to hit a target that you don't even have. I was a flower of the mountains, yes. When I put the rose in my hair like the Andalusian girls used, or shall I wear a red, yes. And how he kissed me under the Morris wall, and I thought, well, as well him as another. And then I asked him with my eye to ask, again yes and then he asked me would I yes to say yes my mountain flower and first I put my arms around him and yes and drew him down to me so he could feel my breath all perfume yes and his heart was going like mad and yes I said yes I will yes my name is Major Mike Webb, and I am running for U.S. Congress with liberty, honor, and excellence. By God, we shall make America great again. Honest.
honest.